Hey guys, I was planning on doing a completely different video today, hence why all these cameras are on the table in front of me. But I decided today also to run around to all my local thrift stores and pawn shops, and I found something quite interesting. This is a Horseman medium format view camera. So it does all of the cool things a large format camera does, but in a slightly smaller package that I was very excited to find because it'll probably fit in my camera bag. My 4x5 camera is so large I could never take it hiking or anything like that. But I really, really am amazed that I found this camera. Don't know much about it. Of course I looked over it in the store before I bought it. And it seems to be in really good condition but other than a brief search of the manual on my phone while looking at it in the shop I don't know much about this. So I'll get to the video involving all these cameras in a few days. But for now, I really want to look at a kind of blind first exploration of this Horseman 980 camera. Let's go. This is one of a long line of these type of uh, 6x9, 6x7 view cameras made by the uh, Kogaku Kikai company and uh, they're still around today make like digital versions where you can put a digital back on it but of course I'm interested in shooting the film in any case I believe uh, I know nothing about this camera so uh, we're gonna learn together how the heck to use it so obviously this is the ground glass right here flings open I can't that's actually uh cloth that's interesting that's been folded up a long time look at how uh, creased it is but certainly uh, other than being a little fingerprinty down in there a little few dust specks the uh, ground glass looks good I guess you just fold it like that and then to take the ground glass off I don't know there's two levers right here I don't know I don't know if those pull in or out or up or down. Uh, on my 4x5, you just lift these up and slide it that way. Okay, you can push them down because you can put a sheet film in here like this. But anyways, I think you push them down. Oh, yep, yeah, push them down and push that way. All right, there's the ground glass. Uh, looks like uh, some of the foam is starting to deteriorate, but um, that would be easy to replace. Looks like there's one pad of foam that goes around like this. Right, so uh, enough waffling with the back for now. I guess I'll figure out... Oh, there you go. So these are to put the medium format back on. So put that on. Push these down, I guess. Push that one that way. Oh, there we go. So they slide kind of in that direction. And then that is now locked on there. Nice. Good system. Now, of course, you can see the lens back in there. Let's see how you open it up. Assume you just press on here. Oh, incidentally, um, this is a completely different style of camera to my 4x5. My 4x5 is a monorail camera, meaning there's one rail, and the lens sits on one holder, and the film sits on another holder. Problem with that is it doesn't fold up very nicely, whereas this is modeled on a field camera, or a press camera, where the uh, bed that the two standards slide on folds up. So I think you just pinch these pull the old lens out. There you go. Interesting. So there's little um, colored things here. Let me zoom in on that. Bit difficult to see, but you see all these? You can flick them up. And, uh, well, I couldn't find a manual for this camera online. I found a manual for another Horseman camera 
and basically these let you connect the lens to the rangefinder focusing system. So depending on what lens you use, you flick up a certain set of these and they're all color coded. And then you pull the lens until it hits them. And now when you move the lens back and forth, which well with these focusing knobs, I think these are focusing knobs. Yes, they are. So now with this lock there, when you focus, the rangefinder in here should actually work. Of course, we'll have to play with that later. And uh, of course, since I have the ground glass, I can verify that the rangefinder and the ground glass both show the image in focus. So it's good that I can experiment without actually loading film in uh, to see how the different components of this camera work. Right. Um, this one just happens to come with the 150 millimeter lens. And looking down here, unfortunately, it looks like this is set for the 105 millimeter lens. So, what does this mean? Well, this is actually what communicates with the rangefinder for the focusing, as far as I uh, am aware from the manual. And this has 105 millimeters written on it. So this piece only works with the 105 millimeter lens. As you can see, it's also color coded. So you're supposed to use these with that, I believe. I believe these colors are supposed to match. But other ones of these are hidden up here to replace. So hopefully I have one for this lens. See right here. Indeed I do. I have the 150, which is excellent. So I believe all I have to do slide this in like so. Tighten it down and now the rangefinder should work with the 105 150 millimeter lens. And it's yellow. So I don't know if that means I have to use these yellow marks all the way up here. I'm not sure. I'll have to look at the manual for that. Because they're color coded, but there's no millimeter numbers on these. So that's kind of strange. All right, let me just pull the lens out again and examine it further. The bellows seem to be in excellent shape, too. Unfortunately, they're kind of papery and thin, obviously, so it can fold up so tight. But I don't see any wrinkles. I don't see any holes. I'll have to do some light leak test by shining a flashlight on that to really see what's going on. But yeah, other than that, this looks quite nice. And uh, you can interchange the lenses by doing this, by lifting up on this, it looks like. Yep. Okay, good. There's no foam in here to go bad. That's just a metal that's been crinkle spray painted or whatever. So that's good. And then let's check the shutter speeds of the lens. This must cock it. No. This is the cocking it, alright. Cool. And looks like there's some lubrication issue. The shutter speed seems right, but it seems like it's delayed. It's like it starts and then goes. Very weird. And this lever here, so you can do the ground glass focusing. There's your aperture control, of course. And shutter speed control up here. Let's try a slow shutter speed. That sounds pretty good. One second. I'm going to time it with my watch. That's pretty darn close. Of course, we have bold mode. What's great about having this uh, ground glass focusing lever is that you can use this as like an extra bulb mode or a T mode so you can do a really long exposure without having a cable release. And then really high speeds. That is really strange. I don't know if it's supposed to do that. Probably not, but it's just 
slow. It's very weird. Oh, it's getting better the more I exercise it. So there's probably some lubricants in there. I guess I'll see if I go shoot it out in the cold weather if this starts to stick again. But obviously there's some sort of strange issue. At least it doesn't seem like the shutter speeds themselves are inaccurate. It seems like the... Yeah, the grease to get to the shutter speeds is bad. That's weird, I've never seen a problem like that on a camera lens. Obviously, uh, with exercise of the shutter like this, it starts to get better. So it's probably just been sitting for a while. Who knows, I might have to do a repair video at some point if that turns out to be a problem, but for now, it doesn't seem to be an issue and I'm not worrying about it. Let's see, what else is there to look at on here? Oh, of course, um, just like any standard view camera, it should have some movements. Now, the, of course, the question is, how do you do them? This looks like a tightening. Is that how you slide it? Yep, all right, so you can do some shift there. Cool, and there's a lock in the center, so you can get it right back in the middle. That's very nice. Is there some rise and some fall somewhere? I've just loosened this up, but nothing. Oh, there you go. Yep. So you can do some tilt there. That's cool. You can see this needle is supposed to show you how far the rangefinder is set, but it's stuck. Don't right know what that there. one does. So obviously one of oh, the movements does that tighten? For so yep. long it's stuck. So, so that's your in rise and your fall. And if you look, well, oh, that's nice. That's actually quite a bit of rise. Part. That. If you look, pretty right cool. Right in there. I don't know how and I'm then show this. You on can't the really camera. do any fall because uh, this is in the way. This part that moves hmm. back and forth on the bed hits a little piece that moves back oh, and wait, forth. Oh wait, no, you can't do some the fall body right there. You can push these and tabs the part in. on the bed's moving back and forth, but the part in the body isn't moving at all. It's supposed to. The part in the bed is supposed to push the one in the body, but the one in the body push is not moving. In, so I think, yep. And you I'm can put my hand in there carefully fall like that. So you can tilt the bed down an extra notch. You can see I'm moving it there. And if you look at the needle, cool. that's all nice. Needle's moving. I think the last thing I'm going to check before ending this video is oh. the range finder. Okay, after playing with it so a few for a little bit there, it snapped up and now they're both staying connected. So now if I focus, ah, uh, yes, yeah, so now it's working. If I focus, you can see the needle moving back and forth. Cool, so I'll see if that sticks later, and then I'll just have to relubricate it. Or if it's just been sitting for so long that it's just seized up. So we'll have to play with that at another time. But it seems to be working. Um, now I'm going to bring the camera up and show you what it looks like through the lenses. Okay, we're now looking to the uh, left of where I usually film. Here's the window. And we're going to try to focus on something, I don't know, maybe the blinds. So you can see the two viewfinder windows here. This one has your frame lines in it. Let me show you. Can you see them around there? So it has frame lines for all the different lenses. And I have the 150mm lens installed, so I'll be using those 150 marks. And then if we move over to the rangefinder, this isn't supposed to be a representation of your view, but rather this moves when you focus. So as you can see, it moving. And oh, so did you see right there? If you look, if you look here, this is one of the blinds on the window. If you look there, you can see there's a slightly yellowish double image of it that's a little to that side. But then as I focus, I can get them to line up. Like so. So now I'd be in focus if I was going to take a picture of the blinds. That's how the rangefinder system works. And it's a little old fashioned to have them in two windows like this. That's how the Voigtlander uh, Bessa T is. but. 
It makes sense in this case um, because by having the rangefinder much more zoomed in than this, the rangefinder can be much more accurate. So it's actually quite a good system. And of course, if you want to focus the old-fashioned way, like a view camera, you can just flip up the ground glass here. And there you go. You can inspect your image. And as you can see, I'm focused on the same point because I haven't adjusted the focus be between looking at the rangefinder and then looking through this. And if you want to get really close, I just discovered this. It's really cool. You can actually hinge the hood out of the way so you can get really close to that ground glass. This will be excellent um, because I actually have a cloth hood for my 4x5 camera to lay over the back of the camera. So I can use it with this as well. So pretty awesome. I can't wait to put my first roll through it. Uh, good thing I have another day of the weekend and on Sunday tomorrow. And I'll definitely be taking this out and experimenting with it. Great. Thank you so much for watching this unboxing first impressions video. Sorry if it wasn't very informative because I don't know much about this camera myself. But hopefully it gets you guys interested. I'm just very excited to have a camera that uses 120 film that has view camera like movements. I think I'll have a lot of fun with that. So uh, see you next time. Oh, sorry, interjection here. I just read the manual for a different horseman, and it says that if you loosen these four knobs, there's two here and two on the other side, then you can do movements with the back as well. So I just loosen these, and we'll see what happens. Whoa. Well, they ain't lying. That's really cool. So look at that. These are the same bellows as here, just continued through. And so yes, you can do a few tilts and things on the back. That's really cool. And that'll be really handy, making this, you know, pretty capable. I, I didn't know it had this. I thought I would just have to do all the movements with the front standard here. But because it has this, that's really awesome. I can do a lot more interesting things with this camera. Sure, it's not much. You can only tilt it like, I don't know, is that 7 degrees, 10 degrees? But it's certainly more than I thought this camera could do. So yeah, pretty impressive for a little package like this. Um, really no bigger than your hand spread out. Quite awesome. Alright, that's it for real this time, so have a good weekend.